I say this every week, but we really did have another incredible week of AI news. Tesla has multiple AI launches. OpenAI is raking in the cash, but also struggling. AI sets records at drone racing, beating the best humans, and Meta launches Code Llama, which quickly beat GPT-4 at coding tasks. We have a ton of other fantastic tech and AI stories today, so sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's go. First, let's talk about Tesla. This week, Tesla launched a massive $300 million AI cluster, including 10,000 NVIDIA H100 compute GPUs. By the way, this is why NVIDIA is crushing earnings lately. Their new AI cluster will be used to power several AI applications, but of course, its main use will be to continue training its full self-driving product. And they have good reason to have such a massive supercomputer. According to Tim Zayman, AI Infra and AI Platform Engineering Manager at Tesla, due to real-world video training, we may have the largest training data sets in the world. Hot tier cache capability beyond 200 petabytes. Orders of magnitude larger than LLMs. Also, this week, Elon Musk showed off the newest version of full self-driving, version 12, in a live stream he did while driving violating Tesla's rules for its advanced autopilot technology. And the 45-minute demo went mainly well, except for a couple issues, including almost running a red light. Musk takes over at that point and reminds viewers that full self-driving V12 is still in beta, although V12 will be the first version to remove the beta label. But that Tesla was able to navigate many complex driving situations, including roundabouts and construction zones. Musk also mentions that V12 will be the first time that full self-driving is entirely cameras and AI, as opposed to previous versions which mixed in other sensors. Tesla has found that the best way to account for the thousands or even millions of edge cases humans experience while driving is to use a pure neural network approach, which is different from other companies like Cruise and Waymo. In true Musk Uber troll fashion, he claims in the video that he'll drive over to Mark Zuckerberg's house to initiate their much anticipated but highly unlikely fight. Next, let's talk about OpenAI. Just a couple weeks ago, it was reported that OpenAI is burning through a tremendous amount of cash, about $700,000 a day, and costs associated with running their AI systems. But now, an article was published claiming OpenAI is on track to generate more than a billion dollars in revenue over the next 12 months, or about $80 million a month. A staggering number given they earned a total of $28 million in all of last year. So it looks like burning all that cash isn't going to complete waste. It's generating a massive amount of revenue. But at the same time, another report published by Spark Toro shows visits to ChatGPT are down 29% since its peak in May. And the majority of usage is for a coding assistant. I can tell you from my experience that coding assistance is my number one use case. And as we'll see in a story later in this video, that dominance may already be threatened by open source and completely free Code Llama by Meta. And there are some other interesting findings from this report. Users are pretty split between using only one prompt during their session and using five prompts with nothing really in between. And those two ends of the spectrum accounting for nearly 70% of all visitors. And some of the most popular words used in ChatGPT prompts include write, create, list, and fun. This article has other awesome findings. I'll drop a link in the description below so you can check it out. So I really can't tell how OpenAI is doing. Revenue is exploding, costs are exploding, and usage is down. My take is that ChatGPT is still settling into its baseline. Since it was such a revolutionary product, people are still figuring out how to integrate it into their lives. And to continue growing its revenue, OpenAI has launched ChatGPT Enterprise. I can tell you firsthand from conversations I've had with my clients that privacy and security are the number one concern amongst businesses when considering ChatGPT. Companies don't want to give sensitive data over to ChatGPT to help train their models for it later to be found in responses by that AI by other companies, effectively leaking company secrets. Now, with ChatGPT Enterprise, that concern has been more or less quelled. Features from ChatGPT Enterprise include that customer prompts and customer data are not used for training OpenAI models, data encryption at rest and in transit, and they're certified SOC 2 compliant. They also offer several highly requested features, including an admin console, single sign-on, unlimited usage of GPT-4, increased speeds, and larger context sizes. ChatGPT Enterprise is a highly compelling product, a strong offering in the face of growing competition from the open source model world. With the guarantee of privacy and security, I can now recommend ChatGPT as a real option amongst the open source models 
to companies that ask me which model they should use for their business. But this wouldn't be AI news if Meta AI didn't launch something incredible and open source. At the end of last week, Meta launched Code Llama, a fine-tuned version of Llama 2, explicitly trained for coding tasks. Shortly after that, multiple fine-tuned versions of Code Llama were released that beat GPT-4 at coding problems. Yes, you heard me right. Beat not just ChatGPT, but GPT-4 also. This is an incredible accomplishment given I didn't think GPT-4 would have any competition in the coding realm anytime soon. GPT-4 has been my go-to coding assistant since it was launched, but now I have a completely free and open source alternative. Not only that, but quantized versions with sizes ranging from a billion parameters all the way up to 70 billion allow for pretty much any hardware to run these models. There's even a full unquantized 34 billion parameter version running at over 20 tokens per second on an M2 Ultra Mac. Be sure to check out the videos I made testing Code Llama versus GPT-4 and also the tutorial videos showing how to install Code Llama locally. Both will be in the description below. Our next story is about the constant march of AI beating humans at new things. This week, AI beat world champion drone racers. The AI system called Swift, designed by University of Zurich researchers, beat the best human drone racers in the world a feat considered impossible just a few years ago. Drone racing is a popular sport where racers navigate drones through complicated courses at speeds exceeding 100 kilometers per hour, controlling them remotely through a VR-like headset connected to an onboard camera. Training for this AI occurred in a simulated environment, and then the race occurred on an actual course. The AI-controlled drone was able to beat the world record by a half of a second, which doesn't seem like much, but in the world of drone racing, everything is measured in fractions of a second. This accomplishment isn't just for fun. It actually has a lot of real world applications, such as environmental monitoring, disaster reporting, and rescue operations. What do you think will be the next thing that AI beats humans at? Let me know in the comments. Our next story is one that I'm very happy to be talking about. A16Z, the famed venture capital firm out of Silicon Valley, seems to end up in my news videos almost every week now. This week, they announced a grant program where they're giving away funding to a small group of AI developers to help open source community. Creating artificial intelligence is extremely expensive given the hardware requirements. Just look at the $300 million AI cluster that Tesla just launched. The open source community gives their software away for free, so acquiring the expensive hardware to create and run open source models is nearly impossible. Now, A16Z will be giving grants to some of the community's most prominent open source AI developers. Tom Jobbins, also known as The Bloke, who I mention all the time, was one of the initial recipients of the grant, and I'm very happy to see this because I use his quantized models all the time. Congrats to all the grant recipients, and a big thank you to A16Z for helping bolster the open source community. Next, not to be left out of the AI wave, Google made many announcements this week, first with its launch of Duet AI and Google Workspaces. This is a massive launch because Google Workspaces has 3 billion users, that number blew me away. I really didn't understand how that's possible, and that's on par with Facebook. I don't know how they calculate those users, but I guess it includes every Gmail user. Now, Google Workspace users can access Duet AI, which Google describes as a powerful collaboration partner that can act as a coach, a source of inspiration, and productivity booster. You'll find Duet features in almost every product within the Google Workspace suite of products. And not only that, Google unveiled several new AI tools and capabilities at the Google Next conference in San Francisco. Let's take a look at some of the launches. Google's cloud service now includes 20 pre-built AI models optimized for enterprises like Llama 2 and Claude 2. They also launched their new AI watermarking product, Synth ID, which helps people identify AI-generated images created by their AI gen art product, Imagine. The watermark is undetectable by the human eye, but also persists even after modifications to the image are made, like filters, color changes, and brightness adjustments. Google also launched access to their new AI training cluster based on their custom-built TPU architecture, which can be used to train and fine-tune AI models. Last, Google updated its Vertex AI platform with upgrades to Palm 2, enhanced code generation, and new search and conversational models. Even with these launches, it still does feel like Google is playing catch up to Meta, OpenAI, and Microsoft. Now let's switch gears for a minute. In tech news, it's been reported that Silicon Valley elite are building a city from scratch. According to the article in Marin Independent Journal, billionaire VC Michael Moritz and others had dreams of transforming tens of thousands of acres into a bustling metropolis that, according to the pitch, could generate thousands of jobs 
and be as walkable as Paris or the West Village in New York. He painted a kind of urban blank slate where everything from design to construction methods and new forms of governance can be rethought. Since the initial idea, large plots of land have been purchased and $800 million has been committed to the project from tech elites. These secretive land purchases have locals worried though, unsure what will become of their quiet towns. Some of the investors that have been identified include Reed Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, Mark Andreessen of Andreessen Horowitz, A16Z, Chris Dixon, Patrick and John Collison, who are the founders of Stripe, Lauren Powell Jobs, Steve Jobs' wife, and more. And this isn't the first time tech entrepreneurs have tried to affect California's significant and ongoing housing crisis. As someone who lives in California, anything to bring down the cost of living is something I'm all for. So I hope they build something incredible. Next, look out mid-journey. Another competitor is on the horizon. Ideogram this week launched in beta with a unique differentiator, being able to add text to AI-generated images. Text in AI images has been a difficult problem to solve, but Ideogram seems to have successfully solved it. Founded by ex-Google Brain researchers, Ideogram received a massive $16.5 million in funding from powerhouse investors like A16Z and Index Ventures. I don't know if just being able to add text within AI-generated images is going to be enough to set them apart in such a crowded field, especially since competition is likely to add this functionality soon enough. Still, I wish them luck, and the more competition, the better for consumers. Speaking of generative art, Runway's Gen 2 had another big release this week called Motion Slider. This feature allows you to select a number from 1 to 10 to control the amount of movement in your output video. Take a look at this example. It seems like each week, text to video is becoming better. Next, Apple may be well positioned to win the hardware game for AI. As it is increasingly difficult to get your hands on NVIDIA GPUs, it turns out that Apple's own silicon, the M1 and the M2, are incredibly good at running AI models. In a lengthy tweet by AI pioneer Andre Karpathy, he details why the M2 chip is a great option for running large language models. And, as mentioned earlier, ex-user Georgi Gurganov showed a video of himself running an unquantized 34 billion parameter version of CodeLama at 20 tokens per second on an M2 Ultra. So all you really need to run incredibly powerful large language models is an Apple computer. But you may not even need a computer. According to the Stability AI founder, he believes we'll see a ChatGPT level model on a mobile phone next year, with a GPT-4 level model the year after that. This is incredible news for the open source AI community and hints at what could be coming from the iPhone maker. Your move, Tim Apple. Now for the AI video of the week. In what is sure to scare the pants off of Disney, ex-user Jeff Synthesized created a two and a half minute long AI generated Pixar-like film using Mid-Journey and Gen 2 called Glitch. The video looks absolutely incredible and could have easily been created by Pixar, but instead it was created by one person, a very hard-working AI artist. Take a look at this 20-second clip from the film. Residents are feeling quite charged up as unexplained glitches and power outages run rampant, turning daily life into a comically electrifying experience. Mrs. Ruth Bolt, a 67-year-old resident of the town, was reported saying, I tried to toast my bread this morning, but instead it flew out of the toaster and stuck to the ceiling. I guess I'm having an upside-down sandwich today. What's causing these electric escapades? Generally, films like this take dozens, if not hundreds of people to create. So the implications for Disney are tremendous. Amid an ongoing writer strike and declining stock performance, I imagine Disney is looking very closely at AI technology to help them reduce their costs of creating amazing films. If you want to submit an entry for AI Video of the Week, jump in my Discord and find the AI Video of the Week channel. I'll link it in the description below. Our last story is about AI and copyright. As regulators race to figure out how to handle the avalanche of AI content being generated, they are now asking for input from the public in determining how to create AI copyright policy. The U.S. Copyright Office has opened for public comment to figure out how to answer three main questions. How AI models should use copyrighted data in training, whether AI-generated material can be copyrighted even without a human involved, and how copyright liability will work with AI. Just last week, I reported that it was ruled AI art can't be copyrighted, but it seems that decision isn't the last word on the subject. And also last week, I reported on major lawsuits filed against OpenAI for allegedly training their models on copyrighted data. It'll be interesting to see how all of these legal elements of AI play out, and I'll keep you up to date all along the way. If you liked this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe, and 
I'll see you in the next one.